Hey, it's Kaylin, and I am doing my June wrap-up. I read eight books in the month of June, and they were mostly pretty short books. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have been able to read that many. So I am just going to jump right into it, um, and I won't spend too much time on each book because I don't want to make this a long video, but here we go. The first book that I read was called Burt Dow. Uh, Deep Water Man by Robert McCloskey. I talked about this book before. I bought it in the state of Maine when I went to visit, and it's about a man who uh, is going on his boat. Uh, I think he's fishing, and he encounters a massive, humongous whale, and I really bought it for the cover, kind of, to be honest with you, and I looked through it, and the illustrations are gorgeous. They're very colorful. Uh, if you don't know Robert McCloskey, he did Make Way for Ducklings and also One Morning in Maine. I don't know if you grew up reading those. I really did in the 80s, uh, but there are a lot older books than that, so I think he wrote those in maybe the 60s. This came out in 1963, so the other books are probably around that time. Um, but anyway, this was very cute. I think I gave it, gave it four out of five stars just for its Basically, the visual quality alone was spectacular. I just love the pictures. It's a cute story. Um, it's very kind of outlandish, but it's a good book, and I really enjoyed it. So that was Burt Dow, Deep Water Man. And the next book that I read is called Check These Out, One Librarian's Catalog of the 200 Coolest, Best, and Most Important Books You'll Ever Read by Gina Sheridan. And this is a fun book. It just has a bunch of lists in different categories of books that this author really enjoyed and recommends. And she gives a description of each book and why she enjoyed it, basically. And there are a lot of different categories she uses. Um, some examples are graphic self, which are graphic memoirs and biographies. Um, American dream, which means stories about trying and failing to achieve the American dream. Uh, there are also funny books and tearjerkers and Southern Discomfort, which means spooky reads set in the American South. So it's an interesting bunch of categories. A lot of books in here were books I hadn't read or had even heard of, but I added a bunch of them to Goodreads because they sounded interesting and they were books that I wouldn't have probably normally picked um, had I not been recommended them. So I recommend this book. This is Check These Out and it I gave it, I think, four out of five stars on Goodreads. The next book is really just a picture book. It's Main Coast. Um, just someone who went around photographing uh, a bunch of different sites in Maine, um, in Portland, and in different areas of Maine on the coast. So uh, I thought this was interesting. There were nice pictures. I didn't think any of them were spectacularly eye-catching um, or gorgeous or anything, but um, just having a little keepsake from my trip to Maine was nice to have. So that is Maine Coastal Impressions, excuse me, Maine Coast Impressions, and the photographer is Nance Trueworthy. That could be Nancy, I'm not sure, but um, yeah, that's Maine Coast Impressions. Next book I read is called Classic Candy, and I am kind of a sugar freak, and I love candy, and I wanted to get a little bit of an idea of the history. So this actually covers the 1950s, basically through the 1980s. And it goes into the history of candy when uh, candy kind of started as penny candy. Um, when you can just get it by the handful and for very, very cheap. And it goes into the three giant companies that kind of competed against each other and bought each other out or bought a lot of different smaller companies to become huge corporate giants, um, and that was, of course, Mars, M&M um, Mars, and Nestle, and the other one uh, being Hershey from Pennsylvania. Um, and so it was interesting to learn different facts, and the fact that one of the companies, the smaller company that it was eventually bought out, was um, in my home state of Wisconsin, and they made, uh, I think I highlighted this in here, but I'm not sure, They had created a popular candy, and I don't remember the name of it right now, but it was surprising to learn 
because I had not known that, and that was in Wisconsin. So this just goes into a lot of different history. It's got a lot of great colorful pictures of like old wrappers, candy wrappers, and just kind of goes through time, and it's just kind of fun, and very pop culture-y, and very short book, so I got through it really quick, quickly, um, and I think I gave it four stars on Goodreads, so that's Classic Candy by Darlene Lacey. The next book was a book that I was really excited to read called The Iron Giant, and you probably have heard of the movie, if not, um, maybe you have seen it, or but uh, this book, I was expecting it to be more like the movie, because I love the movie so much, but it really wasn't. Um, there were a lot of different things, um, a lot of differences, and it kind of um, focuses more on the giant's battle with a, a creature from outer space that's coming um, to attack the Earth, and the little boy who is um, Hogarth in here, his name is Hogarth, he is featured but not prominently, so there's not a whole lot with the friendship between the giant and the boy as much as I would have liked. So this was a quick read, but it was just kind of disappointing to me because I just I just loved the movie so much and maybe it just kind of spoiled me for the book. So I ended up giving this two stars. It wasn't that enjoyable. Um, there are some illustrations in it, but even the illustrations, I kind of just I didn't think were anything spectacular. Um, so I just kind of fell flat for me, so I gave it two stars. Next book I read is a graphic memoir. It's called Quiet Girl in a Noisy World by mm -hmm. Debbie Tung. And this is about a girl who is an introvert, obviously, and she would rather kind of spend her nights indoors um, reading a book or just playing on her computer or watching a movie and kind of avoiding social situations. Um, but this kind of goes through her college life and her meeting a boy and eventually she gets married and that's not really that's not really a spoiler but um, there are so many other things that happen in the book basically but um, I it, it didn't bring anything that new I didn't think for to as far as introverts go learning about introverts uh, she does talk about taking a Myers-Briggs test to learn more about her personality type and being an introvert, and I thought that was kind of interesting. But what I really kind of enjoyed the most about this was uh, the watercolor that she used for some of all of the images. And just talks about kind of her struggles in meeting new people and making trying to make small talk with them when she would really just like rather not, um, not answering her phone when people call and just being at parties and not knowing what to say and things like that and feeling, but feeling kind of obligated, like it's the thing to do. And later on, she learned, she starts to learn more about, you know, her personality and that there are others like her and she kind of more embraces it than feels like it's something that's, um, unusual or wrong. So I liked this. I gave it four out of five stars. I liked the artwork. Um, it wasn't anything um, mind-blowing or anything, but I enjoyed it. It kind of, it was nice to read. I think I read it in one sitting, which is kind of rare for me to do, even for not very long book and graphic memoir. So, but I enjoyed it. So that was Quiet Girl in a Noisy World. The next two were just two children's books I got for free, and I just sat down and read them. Um, and they are Clifford Goes to School, Goes to Dog School, and Clifford Grows Up. They're children's books. I mean, they took me 10 minutes to read, and um, they're cute. I don't have a lot to say about them. <laughs> um, I probably would have enjoyed these a lot more when I was a kid. I'm sure I probably did. But anyway, I had these for free, so I just wanted to read them, and I had some time, and I just, just read them. So, And the last book I had was pretty fun. It's called 101 Movies to See Before You Grow Up, and this is by Suzette Vallée. 
or Vale, I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name, but um, this is a really interesting book. I had 101 books to read before you grow up, and that was a fun book to read, and a lot of gave a lot of good recommendations. I love books that that like that that are kind of lists of things that re people recommend to you, whether it be books or movies, things like that. So this is kind of a series. I think they have 101 TV shows to watch before you grow up. Uh, I might not get that one. I'm just a little bit more into um, books and movies, I think. But um, this gives a lot of great recommendations. A lot of the movies in here I had seen already and I agreed with, and there were great choices. Here's The Iron Giant, which I was just talking about. The movie is excellent. And it gives you a little place at the bottom where you can rate the movie and kind of make notes on it. Uh, you can write who you saw it with. And that, I thought that was kind of a really neat little touch. And so I'll give you a few that she talks about in here. It's a Wonderful Life, which of course is wonderful. And The Brave Little Toaster, which I thought was interesting because you don't hear about that movie too much. But I grew up loving that movie and I remember watching it with my brother a bunch of times. Um, Up, which is an amazing movie. I think it's Pixar. Might be Disney, Disney or Pixar. It's a Disney movie, but it has that kind of animation, that Pixar type animation, that computer um, animation. And I love that movie. Wizard of Oz is in here. Ice Age, Edward Scissorhands. They kind of go up through young to more like adult movies, uh, but they're all basically family friendly, with the exception of maybe a couple of them. Avatar is in here, Beauty and the Beast, but I thought it was fun. I love the fact that you can mark off the movies that you've seen and then rate them, so I was doing that, and I would love to read more books like this that kind of just give you recommendations of things, and it kind of was a fun way to look back on the movies I had seen and remember where I had seen them, who I had seen them with, and why I enjoyed them. So this was fun, and I gave this four out of five stars. I actually um, have this in, had a picture of this in my Instagram account, and the author contacted me. She was very, very nice and sweet, and so that was cool. And she thanked me for just kind of um, complimenting her book on Instagram, so I like that. Um, so anyway, that was my last book that I read. I am, it's the last day of June, so I don't anticipate reading any more books today. So that's what I have for June. Um, I will probably film a July TBR maybe later today and see how I do with that. But my June TBR didn't really follow that much, so... I don't know, they're still kind of fun to make anyway. So anyway, that is what I read in June, and I will talk to you later, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.